Main man, main man here. Y'all know how I get down. We talking boxing. Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally getting what we have been craving for for a long fucking time, y'all. I'm talking about the mega matchup between Keith, one time Thurman, 26 and 0, 22 knockouts, and Sean Showtime Porter, 26 and 1, 16 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't say this much. I really don't. But we have to take our heads off to the man upstairs himself. That's right, Mr. Al Heyman. I don't usually give the props where the props is due. We, you know, but whenever he does something right, we gotta we gotta applaud him for it. I'm a high, high criti critic of Al Heyman and the fights that he put on for his PBC shit. But it looks like they're trying to time this fight, ladies and gentlemen, with the premiere of PBC on Fox. And uh, what they're talking about, a January 23rd date. That's when uh, PBC premieres on Fox. And, uh, they, you know, they already have a three-fight deal worked out. And this would be a hell of a fight to kick it off, man. I'm telling y'all, man, I, I can't tell you how excited about this fight that I really am. We know earlier, we've heard originally that we thought it was going to go down on December 12th. And uh, when this thing got postponed, man, the boxing world went all the shit. And now we see that we're going to get this shit. Now, let me just say this about this fight. In my eyes, and this is just my opinion, Sean Showtime Porter has already been to this mountaintop, okay? He's been here. He's taken on very, very good boxers at the welterweight division, as well as even the light welterweight division, and Adrian Brana, and he's also taken on the likes of Kell Brook. And if you want to throw Paulie Malignaggi in there, be my guest. He also defeated Devin Alexander. Those opponents alone are possibly better than... You know, Keith Thurman's last, what, four or five opponents, man. You know what I mean? We haven't seen Keith Thurman really at the top of the food chain since, what, Diego Chavez back in 2013, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, look at the competition he's took on since then. Jesus Soto Carras, Julio Diaz, Leonard Bundu, but 40-year-old Leonard Bundu, Robert the Ghost Guerrero, 135 sensation Robert Guerrero. And in his last fight, Luis Calazo. Now, those opponents, ladies and gentlemen, I just, you know. Now, I will say, Leonard Bundu was undefeated when Keith Thurman fought him. So you got to give some credit there. I will give some credit there. Leonard Bundu was 31-0 when him and Keith Thurman squared off. But that 31 is bloated, needless to say. Very fucking bloated. And Diego Chavez was also undefeated when Keith Thurman fought him. The last time I believe he was at the really at the top of the food chain. But that was 2013, and this is a long time coming now. We've seen Keith Thurman sit out the ring for long fucking periods of time. You know what I mean? And then it never was about uh, you know, him sitting out of the ring due to injury. It was most well, at least they said it was injury, but not like a surgery having injury. It was always like tendonitis or some shit. You know what I'm saying? That's what he was going through, tendonitis. Not pull muscles, not, you know, crack ribs, you know, bad retinas. No, fucking tendonitis, ladies and gentlemen. So whatever the fuck, a lot of people have granted these two guys who had the welterweight division. A lot of the American fans have granted these two dudes at the top of the welterweight division. Despite the fact uh, Sean Porter has lost to Kell Brook roughly about a, two fights ago. But the fact still remains that the American fan base placed these two guys at the tippy top of the welterweight division. I am a Keith one time Thurman fan. Hell, he's been given a fucking title for crying out loud. He holds the WBA world welterweight title. Whatever the fuck. You know, that he's been Floyd's mandatory for like the longest Floyd never fought him. You know, he vacated and now that elevated Keith Thurman. But the fact still remains, ladies and gentlemen, is that this kid, this dude really needs this fight because in my opinion, and I notice a lot of fans are doing that a lot lately, man. They're just placing boxers at the top of division, saying, oh, this guy is the number one guy in the division, though he hasn't proved shit. You dig where I'm going? A lot of people do that with Terrence Crawford. I like Terrence Crawford, man. I think I said before, he gives a lot of people at the 140-pound division a lot of problems. But a lot of people base that off his style, not what he has done. And at this particular moment, all he's beating is Tomas Delorme, and Dierry Jean, but everyone's running around like he's the number one light welterweight. He's the number 140 pound fighter. And it's the same thing 
with Keith one time Thurman. He's been sitting as the mandatory or interim champion or whatever you want to call him at the WBA at the welterweight division for so long. A lot of people had just granted him, oh, he's next to Floyd, he's the best welterweight fighter. We've seen how Al Heyman marketed him very well on PBC against a lot of the fighters I just named, including that Robert Guerrero. I think the Robert Guerrero match was like the biggest, you know, rated PBC uh, show of all uh, at this point. Because on that same card, they had Adrian Braun. But the fact still remains, this is Keith Thurman's time to shine. The man has an 81% knockout ratio. I appreciate his style. I appreciate how he fights. I love the way he fights. But this fight right here is going to be extremely, extremely telling in my eyes. In my eyes. I really do. I think he really needs this fight to be established as the top guy at welterweight. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like I said before, Sean Showtime Porter, he's been there. This man is a world, former world champion that earned his world championship title by defeating Devin Alexander for that IBF strap before losing it to Kell Brook. But he earned that shit, man. And he defended that motherfucker strap. That's something that Keith Thurman has yet to do. His resume is much better than Keith Thurman's at this particular point. So, Sean Porter has been there, man. He's been there. This fight is going to be telling for so many things. Now, don't get me wrong. The loser of this fight, I'm not saying is shit. Not by far, especially if that's a valiant effort, which I can't see any other way with these two guys. If it's a valiant effort, you can't say neither one of these fighters are shit. They still would, would, would pretty much be in the mix to be one of the, you know, some of the top guys at welterweight. The thing is, I'm saying about Keith Thurman is he had he needs the work. He needs the guys to place him there while people have just placed him there. Because of the people he's beaten. He's beaten, I mean, just as recently as 2014. This is 2015. He fought a dude with nine losses, ladies and gentlemen. The fight before that, he fought a guy with eight losses in Julio Diaz and Soto Carras. So, you know, he hasn't been. His last fight against Luis Colazo was a guy with six losses. So, you know, this is, hey, look, man, I'm saying that Keith Thurman needs this win to if he wants to be the dude at welterweight as most people have anointed him as because of the marketing that they did on pbc then this is the fight that will prove it. this is the fight that will prove it we know sean porter is cut from the elite cloth look at what he did to adrian Braun. look at how he just be, i mean really it wasn't even a competitive fight in my eyes other than that 12th round knockdown it wasn't really a competitive fight, though it, I admit Adrian Braun is a lighter weight guy. But look what he did to Adrian Braun. And though he lost to Kell Brook, he still made it a very, very contentious fight in which he gave his all. Just a bad fucking game plan. Now, I will get more into game plans with these two fighters in future videos. I'm not going to do it on this video. I'm going to be real. I understand what people are going to say. Oh, Sean Porter is reckless. You know, uh, he comes in swinging and, he, and, and and he's very reckless in how he swings and just that in the third. And a lot of people want to say, oh, well, Keith Thurman, uh, you know, he's a powerful fighter. He hits very hard. He's a patient fighter, but his defense needs work. I know a lot of people going to go there and we want to get into that in future videos. You can believe that shit. But the fact still remains, this fight is the fight that Keith Thurman, in my eyes, needs to be honestly earn the right to be called the guy. You get me? And that's just my opinion. How do you guys feel about it? Maybe you guys feel as though Keith one time Thurman has already done enough to be called the, the, the guy other than Floyd Mayweather. Maybe you guys feel that way. I don't. I don't. But he's on a good track. You know, he's still young. Don't get me wrong. He's, he's on a very, very good track. He's only 26 years old. He has a long way to go. And he's really, honestly, schedule-wise in his, in his career, he's about at the point where he should be. Maybe they just didn't want to rush the kid. But I do know he had them tendonitis issues. I do know he had that hematoma in that one time he was nurturing. You know, there's a lot of things that go in. People don't know why they postponed this fight for a later date. I think it's all because of the Fox thing. I think he's totally healed. He didn't really take much damage in that Colossal fight other than that body shot that was hurt around the fucking world. So, but he still got Colossal out of there in seven rounds. So, I mean, you know, he's still a fresh guy. 
And it's going to be interesting. I don't think uh, Porter took any damage in the, in the Bronner fight. You know what I mean? If Porter can take this title off of Keith Thurman, man, oh my goodness. I, I mean, I got nothing but respect for both fighters. Don't get me wrong. It's just to me, one is already proven and the other one is like right on the cusp. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. But either one of these guys lost. If, if either one of these guys lose, I still take my head off to them. And as long as they put in a valiant effort, I, I want to see an explosive fight. Of, uh, if it's Even if it's a chess match. But given the styles of these two fighters, I don't think it'll be much of a chess match. But either way, you know what I mean? I just want to see a great fight. And it's about time that Al Heyman has finally put two guys, at, two top guys at the welterweight division together to fight one another. And it's going to be done, ladies and gentlemen, on network television, not even pay-per-view. This could be a pay-per-view caliber on the low. This could honestly be a pay-per-view caliber fight. I don't know. To us diehards, maybe, but not to the casuals. But I don't know. What do you guys think about this fight? To the next video, Main Man Made Man. Don't forget to subscribe. Twitter, Made Man 511. Facebook, Main Man Made Man. This is the fight that he needs, man. I got videos in my archives uh, talking about Keith One Time Thurman using the same criticism. And though he looks good in the ring, stylistically wise, you know, the, the, the talk he talked, how he was calling out Mayweather for so long. He's been calling out Mayweather since given he was the mandatory. I, I understand that. But if you want Mayweather, you went through fucking Bundu, Guerrero, Diaz, Soto Carras, Calazo. You can't avoid guys like Porter, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Peace out.